All right, so this is um, a new series in the middle of my series um, called This Is Why I'm Stressed. Think about the song, This Is Why I'm Hot, and then just replace hot with stressed. Or hot works, actually. Um, so as you all know, I am a full-time graduate student. I um, got an offer for fellowship for PhD um at a school in florida i won't say which one i'm sure you could probably guess and um i before i even moved i'd, I'd asked like lots of times hey like how do you support graduate students in finding housing because having worked in higher education for 13 and a half 14 years one of the most challenging things that I've been able to see is when it comes to students trying to identify and find um, housing for themselves um, for several reasons. Some of the reasons being institutions really don't um, consider or um, do a lot for graduate students. Um, even though, and I want even though graduate students make up a good bulk of the teaching bodies on a campus, and even though graduate students bring in grant funding and all that good stuff, but universities typically don't do a great job in supporting graduate students. Um, and so, before I even was admitted, and I don't know if y'all can see what I'm dealing with, before I was even admitted into the program, that's something that I was at, I asked like several times. I was like, look, these apartments look terrible. Uh, look at them. They're just old and dingy and not taken care of. Um, that's something I asked a lot of times was, hey, like what, what support in this fellowship, right? The, the support, the fellowship is for, um, the purpose was to increase faculty of color in a particular in this field and so one of the questions I asked was you know housing is a big deal if you have nowhere to live forget the fellowship like that you kind of missed the point if you have nowhere to live so I have been um, searching for housing since almost a year is what I'll say as soon as I thought about coming I began searching for apartments apartment. Um, my advisor says, "Oh, here, there's a list of grad that graduate students share. That was the, that was all the support. That orientation. Oh, there's a list of that graduate students circulate. Well, this list is antiquated because it's anyone that's put something on a list since however long graduate students have been here. So it's not like it's an up to date." listing of things it's kind of a this is what we have situation um I tried to get on on-campus housing that's ideal for me because I don't like driving my car and it's just easier they are again it, it was not even a lottery system you have to put an application put a deposit in and it's like hunger games like I bs you not like the app the the selection of apartments opened up at 9 a.m. and it was like whoever hits it first which it just makes no like no I've again I've worked with in 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 student affairs with housing departments I've never seen this hunger game style thing so I find an apartment online help us I go to look at the apartment before I move in I was able to stay with a, a person in my program for like two weeks and so while the two weeks I'm like trying to figure out all this stuff person you could turn you can turn like you really can pay attention um help us lord um i look at the apartment that i i'm getting all i have are images online and they all lie and i put i go to it and they're like oh it'll be ready for you to look at it. i was like i'm not signing a lease until i viewed it like i, I worked in student leasing I'm not signing a lease until I view the apartment because that's asinine. Like, why would I sign up for a year of living in a place that I don't know what it looks like? That is unwise. So they're like, oh, it'll be, you can go view it on this day. Great. They're like, you can go view it at like 4 p.m. I showed up at five, I messaged, 
first i'm looking for the office they have no office for the apartment first red flag i call the number like oh we don't have an office you but you it's open okay i walk in and it's disgusting there was still wet paint this is at 5 p.m there was still wet paint meaning they had just finished painting i ruined a sweater i had to throw the sweater away um because like it was wall paint um it's not been thoroughly cleaned the refrigerator's dirty cabinets have dents in them um I go upstairs to where the, the living space is. It's not been clean. Like the tracks for the closets are disgusting. Um, I go to um, open the patio door. It won't open at all. The patio's not been cleaned off. It's just, and I, and I tell our media, like I'm not living like this. So I was like, this apartment, having worked in leasing for students, I'm like this part, this apartment is not ready and it's not fit to be lived in. Like. I don't know what kind of game y'all are running. Like, this is not fit. They're like, oh, well, well, we can transfer your your application deposit to another apartment complex. Fine. Here's the ones you have available. I find one. I was like, I want this one. I want to live in these. We don't have any of those available. We have these other places. I was like, so why did you offer me the, any other? Why would you say we have other properties and all of them are available if I ask and you don't have anything available? I go to another property um, and the apartment the apartment i'd seen one of them on the inside the apartment was nice but the outside is super sketchy and scary um it'd be different if i was living with like a whole family and we had mad protection but i'm seeing like people walking around in all of one color outfit um teenagers outside smoking weed one time there was somebody on a roof of the apartment leasing office like getting high and i'm like absolutely not parking spaces are small it's cramped it's just it's a no for me so then i see this other place and this is kind of last resort and i end up staying in this apartment well it looked nice when i went to like walk around it i move in there is a roach a dirty people roach on the wall immediately i just start crying um i call them like the roaches and the 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 and i have video i take i like to keep records the front office lady says, oh, well, the cleaning lady never saw a roach. The apartment's been, un the apartment's, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't move my stuff in. Cause I had a, a um, one of those pods coming. Oh, the cleaning lady didn't see any roaches. That's your, that's your level of, by this time I'm stuck though, right? Like I have to have somewhere to live. School's already started. Cause they started hell up early. Um, and so I got to thug it out and I'm just crying. I'm frustrated. I'm crying. <laughs> She's like, oh, we'll have somebody come and spray. That's the solution. Nothing else available. Have somebody come spray. They had someone come and do the day that the guy came to spray. I saw four different types of roaches. This place is disgusting. Apparently. And so, again, all I can do is cry and be frustrated because I didn't grow, like, I don't, there's a lot of things that we didn't have when we were kids. Sorry, my nose ring. But I'm not accustomed to, I'm not accustomed to living. And I told her, like, I'm not accustomed to living like this. I go check the mailbox. Mailbox key doesn't work. They say they fix it. Oh, no, my key didn't work for a while. Like, my key was not, was not consistently working. The mailbox key doesn't open the mailbox. Well, where I'm from, once you change your address, who cares what's in, like, you just put your mail inside. Nope. Because there was no name updated. Mind you, I can't get in the mailbox. They won't, they don't have any mail in there. I don't know what the happened to the mail. They fix it. It works for, like, it works once. Maybe twice. It doesn't work anymore. I email back and say, hey, the, the mailbox key is not working again. Well, somebody fix it, but they're not here this weekend. This no was on a Friday. They're not no, maybe Thursday. They're not here. They're gone until Monday. Okay. Again, I have video of all this. Um, and emails, because I keep the same email train strain going. Um. So that's the guy comes and sprays. He was nice. Tells me what to do. I'm not a dirty person. You know, they get it squared away. I see no more bugs until it's a new kind of bug that's not a roach 
some others call a spring bug, something like that. Um, and then I recognize I start smelling something. Now, I'm cold natured, so my air, like, I don't like a hair on. I don't like it on. It bothers me. I start smelling mildew. Well, one time it rained, I noticed, like, mildew in the wind windowsill. Cleaned it off. Oh, the blinds didn't work. And then one day they fell. The new blinds they put in just fell while I was out of town. They had to come back and put them up again. I had no peephole when I moved in. They had painted the apartments, except under my window, there was a big green splash. Like they didn't fit, like it was just under the window. They didn't paint over it. Like what the heck? There was a water hose connected to my water outlet with a paint bucket underneath it. Again, like just lack of care just basic things so i'm noticing the smell of mildew and i'm like hey the apartment smells i don't know what the issue is oh well it should be clean it shouldn't it definitely say it shouldn't i don't care what and before i moved in i said hey i have allergies to things i have to be really careful um uh, and it's been months and my apartment smells like mildew. I had some someone came to visit my house they were like it stinks in here some person the person i knew now they could have been nicer or kinder about it but they said it smells in here and i was like shoot i can't opt for breeze i've i vacuum regularly um i vacuum regularly i um i for breeze the carpet i let the you know the fans are going i couldn't the patio door that's there's a patio to the room the screen door wouldn't close and so it's just one thing after another and so i'm looking for another apartment i'll probably cry i've been trying to find another apartment but because this school pays their graduate students below poverty levels i don't meet the qualifications for any of these apartments like even the ones that are shared i guess i only share apartment with four other people i'm I'm a full-time adult graduate student. I am not interested in living with undergrads. And I've tried to like ask people around like where they live and it is just, <coughs> excuse me, just not unsavory. You know, I've driven around and it's just not what the business is, but they, the apartments are extremely high to live here. So I've been looking, I've done an average. I looked on a couple apartment sites like rent.com, apartment.com and just put in specs for a one bedroom to two bedroom apartment. And I don't meet the qualifications of making 2.5 to three times what they require to move in. Now, how is it so that a university as big as this one that makes millions off of athletics? And I've been a part of like Zoom meetings where graduate students are trying to like advocate for themselves and to, you know, for increases. Again, I got a fellowship, so I, I you know, and I just emailed my professor the other day and said, hey, I'm having health issues here because of the apartment. I think there's mold. I'm about to do a mold test because when I go into the apartment, like heavy like sinus congestion out of nowhere. Like I'll be fine if I'm outside. As soon as I walk into the apartment, it's like it just hits me. Um, I told the apartment, they, they turned all oh, their answer was we checked the ducks and according to F Florida law, if, if it's if it's above 80 degrees you can get spores now this smell has been here since i moved in in january so it's not always been above 80 degrees and i've been complaining about the smell forever and so i'm going to do my own mold kit because i requested a mold test be done their re resolution was to turn on the air conditioning i have the video i, I mean did i record that one i probably audio recording that was it and they didn't tell me they were gonna, they didn't tell me they were coming. I, Cause I asked, they asked, wouldn't you want us to come by? I was like, this date, this time. They came when I wasn't home. I was like, I wasn't home. You told me this. Oh, we were just doing a walkthrough. Sure, lady. And so it's, it, the entire apartment stinks. It smells horrible. So I am at my wits because I can't afford an apartment in this city. Um, and like, I don't mean like just say new, I mean like decent apartment, right? Like places that don't have like bugs and don't have mildew and mold and places that have been taken care of, like basic living. There's just no, there's just nowhere here. And so I'm exhausted. I've been looking for apartments since I moved into this one. My lease is up in July. And so I found one that I like, I feel comfortable and the rent is 
$1,400 a month for a one bedroom, $1,300 a month, 1334 for a two bedroom. Again, you have to make three, 2.5 times the rent a month. I don't make two, it is literally going to be Sixty-five to seventy percent of my salary. I quit my job. I sold my house and relocated my life for this. And I know things have opportunity costs, but I am I am really starting to believe that this was the wrong choice. Um, that being stressed out, surrounded by. It, ooh, racist signs all day long um, in this state that does not care about people of color or non-conservatives. Um, I've heard at this institution in my department, other graduate students have told me that they were writing their thesis statements and were told they needed to change language because of the public school. It's a public school and how would it look? because of the conserv conservative rhetoric. Like, is that not, like that's that's impeding upon freedom of speech, right? Like someone does research, like how are you? And so it's, this is, this is, this is not even, I'm not even here a year and already I wish that I could just do my degree online. And so I may ask for that. I have surgery coming up, that's another thing. I'm supposed to have surgery um, in July. And the bigger piece is like, I can't move. <laughs> um, my partner does not live here. He does not live in the state and just can't take time off like that. Um, so who knows? I don't know. I look tired because I am tired. I went to another apartment today. The paperwork's in the seat to look at it. I called last week and no one responded to a phone call. I said, I just go up there. I go to the apartment. There's no one inside. Like, there's no one there. I sit down and wait after about, not long, maybe like five minutes. A guy comes in. He was just showing the apartment to other people. I ask, hey, you know, I called last week. He's like, sorry, I'm the only one here. Um, he just like, could you explain the process to me? Because it says you have things online. He's like, oh, there's actually a waiting list. To get on the waiting list is $50. An application is $50. I said, so how many units do you have? I said, well, how long is waiting list? There's 20 people on the waiting list. I said, well, how many units? A hundred. I was like, you have a hundred units available? He's like, no, we have a hundred units total. So how many will you have in July? Oh, I don't know. So you want me to put 50? And that's not the only place that does that. This is, again, I've worked in leasing, worked in how, I mean, I don't, I don't know. This is, so I said, so you want me to put $50 down to get in line? I said, so what if you don't, if we will have something available, but we don't know when. That's what, you, that's what the university did pay this application fee and and then go Hunger Games style. And they changed Hunger Games to, oh, we're gonna let you know. But when I called, I was like, so can you tell me like where I am in the line of like waitlisting? Oh, we can't tell you that. I asked for like three and a half, four weeks. I called, people were short, didn't want to talk to me. Um, I called this last time, they were like, oh, there's like a thousand people in front of you. You don't think you should tell people, graduate students, that there's a thousand people in line before you take their money? So this is this is a, this is a day in life of a of a doctoral student, and I should have yeah. And here I am in the helping field. I'm gonna tell you this: don't don't do anything with education. Don't do it. These schools don't care enough. The state does not care enough. Um, they don't care enough. And I mean, K-12 or higher ed, do not do it. I don't care if you want to help people. You volunteer on a weekend and do some tutoring. It You can't live. You can't make a living wage. You can't. When I left my job at a private university that made bank, I, I was in two positions there. The first position I left, it took, and I kid you not, five to seven people to do my one job. The second place I left, they just, I'm, I'm still doing the position in a distance basis, 
but it's not paying enough for what I have to deal with, not for what I'm having to do. Um, it's not, it's not doing it. And they just, he just decided to, just to put my position, my hire on hold. So folks don't go into high, don't do it. Find another field. What are the ways can those skill sets be translated to something else? Again, I've been in higher ed for 13 years and it's not getting better. Um, and since the state doesn't care, since they wanna, since conservatives and Republicans wanna like halt trying to do like loan forgiveness, don't spend your energy and time going into a field that does not value you as an educator um, does not value your time or your talent and wants you to do above and beyond what they pay you to do. So I'm going to stop there, but needed to, wanted to, wanted to get that out.